Today, I am going to share with you the worst female designer fragrances according to AI. So I went on ChatGPT and I asked the question and they gave me an answer and I can't wait to share it with you. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. I see these videos all the time on YouTube, uh, worst fragrances or best fragrances according to TikTok or Instagram or YouTube. YouTube, and I don't actually know how they find the information out. So I thought, well, the one person that I can ask is the chat GPT AI. So I did that and they gave me a fantastic list of fragrances that are hated by many, many women. So let's start with number 10. And just so you know, I'm going to kind of amp this up a bit. You do you. If you love these, you go ahead and wear them. Fragrance is subjective. But here we go. And I'm going to start with number 10, and that is La Vie Belle. Now, I happen to like that fragrance, so I'm kind of irritated that it's on the list. That said, I kind of understand why. So La Vie Belle, it's kind of like, for me, it's got pear, it's got black currant, it's juicy. Uh, there's a lot of gourmand notes, so some caramel. I think there's praline in it. But when I first smelt it, I thought to myself, what on earth am I even smelling? Like it was a mosh of notes that seemingly clashed between the florals to the fruits to the praline. I thought to myself, who on earth would wear this? It's just a patchouli balm of obnoxiousness. That said, it did actually really grow on me and now I like it. But um, it's a very popular fragrance, so men seem to love it. Uh, but some people consider it a little bit pedestrian because it's been out there and everybody's worn it and everybody's smelt it. Uh, to me, nothing's really pedestrian because you make it amazing. So you can take the most boring fragrance in the world and when you put it on, it becomes spectacular. That's just the reality. But for me, I can get why La Vie Belle would be in number 10 spot. Number nine is Gucci Bloom by Gucci. Now, personally, I think that Gucci Bloom should be close to the top because it is an obnoxiously uh, potent tuberose fragrance. But to me, it's not the bubblegum tuberose that's so popular right now. It's kind of an old school floral tuberose. It's very floral. And for me, Gucci Bloom, it's just too much. It's too much floral. Uh, I can be get behind a decent floral fragrance, even if there's no fruit in it. I can get behind a decent floral fragrance, but this one is somehow, it just, it's heady. It's potentially headache inducing. It's strong. It's obnoxious. It never dies down for me. And to me, uh, Gucci Bloom, it's like, um, it's one of those ones that you would consider a scrubber and you wanna get it off right away. Now that said, there's a couple of the Gucci Blooms uh, that I actually don't mind. So I think there's one with kind of red florals on the front and one with green florals. Actually, both of those I don't mind, but as for the original, I'm not a fan. Way in as well, like if you love these fragrances and I'm tearing them apart, you tell us. <laughs> In number eight spot is Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo. Now, Jimmy Choo has a toffee note, which is pretty cool, but overall, it's kind of a generic fragrance. So it's a bit, I think it's got a little bit of fruit in it. Um, there's nothing that makes it stand out for me. I know it's well loved, so I was actually surprised that it was on this list. But uh, when I looked at what Fragrantica had to say, a lot of people just considered it uh, very nondescript, very kind of blase. So Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo, number eight. Number seven is People's Beloved Black Opium. It is in the most hated list. And again, I think whenever you get a very popular fragrance, so Black Opium has been one of the top sellers. Uh, it's very, very popular, not unlike La Vie Belle. So um, whenever you have a fragrance that's uber popular, you're going to get a real mix of reviews from people that absolutely hate it 
to people that absolutely adore it. So it's a cult favorite for many. And my guess is if I put in the question, what are the most loved female fragrance designer fragrances, black opium would be on the list. This one is kind of coffee. There's caramel. I think there's some orange blossom. There may be some pear in there. Uh, to me, it, it's off-putting. I find the florals with the coffee and the caramel in that one to not be so great. I definitely prefer The Only One by Dolce & Gabbana. The Only One by Dolce & Gabbana has uh, very similar notes, but I just think it's a little bit more complex. Lots of people like the Black Opium for like a date night sexy fragrance, and I think guys tend to like it. But me, I'm, it's a pass for me. In number six spot, is Angel by Mugler. Now that one I think should be way higher on the list as well because Angel, I, you're either an Angel fan or you're not. Very few people are, are, oh, it's okay. Most people either hate it or they love it. And I happen to hate it. It's so popular. Like again, Angel is a major bestseller. Lots of women love it. You're either an angel or an alien fan. And I am definitely in the alien camp. I like some of the angel flankers, but as far as the original, I just, I, I can't get behind it when I smell it. It makes my lip go like this. Like I just, ugh. I find it too sickly. I don't actually mind the EDT, but the EDP, I just find it so cloying. And like, I, I, I can't, I just... I literally, it makes me feel sick. And what it reminds me of, this is so nasty, but um, it reminds me of like a cougar, you know, the cougars. Uh, if you're like the stereotypical kind of cougar where you imagine they've got like quite big hair, major makeup on, they're, they're so committed to their leopard print leggings and leather. Like leopard print leggings, leather coat, uh, that's their kind of uniform and they smell like angel and they're, the, it, it's, it's, it's nasty. It just, it's nasty. And I'm sorry if you love it. If you love it, go ahead and keep loving it. But I totally understand why it's on this list. A number five spot is Viva La Juicy by Ju Juicy Couture. Now, what's crazy about that is I wore Viva La Juicy for years. It was basically my signature fragrance. And when I wanted to start kind of, del you know, delving into fragrance a bit more and I wanted to find something different because I was kind of sick of it. Uh, and to me, it's just a juicy, sweet, kind of happy fragrance. Uh, but I would go in and I felt <laughs> like it's so crazy, but if I'd go into a fragrance shop like Sephora and if they said to me, well, what's the fragrance that you wore? And I would say Viva La Juicy. I felt judged every time. It was just like this kind of look went across their face like, uh, and then I'd go, because you could tell and I'd go, oh, you don't like G Viva La Juicy? They, they'd kind of go, well, it's a bit juvenile. That would be the term always. And I'm like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like I'm in my thirties and I'm really loving Viva La Juicy. Why is it so immature? And so I'd smell something else and I'd be like, no, no, I like my Viva, Viva La Juicies. So then I ended up getting Viva La Juicy Noir and I wore it, but then I all of a sudden just hated it. I don't know if the fragrance turned on me or what, uh, but I never really could get behind uh, Viva La Juicy after that. That said, lots of people really love that one and especially Viva La Juicy Gold. I think it's called Gold Couture. That is super popular and guys love that DNA, like that sweet kind of juicy shampoo-y feel. Guys love it, like they just do. In number four spot is Gucci Guilty. Now, honestly, I can't remember what that one smells like. I know I have smelt it, I know I didn't mind it, uh, but I hate that big heavy gold bottle. Like I just think it looks clunky and chunky and ugly. So on the bottle alone, I would not go for it. Fragrance Inside, uh, some of the reviews on it was, again, generic, uh, you know, just kind of generic, typical designer, that kind of thing. What about you? Have you tried Gucci Guilty? Is that one that you like? I do like the, I think they came out with Gucci Guilty Femme or something like that, Gucci Guilty Absolute 
something like that. The red and the gold larger bottles or kind of more tall bottles rather than that fat stubby bottle. Those two, I actually liked both of them. But again, there was a, a, you know, kind of, it was a little bit generic feeling, but I did actually really enjoy both of them. Kind of that sexy vibe is what I got out of it. In number three spot is Prada Candy. And you know what? I 100% agree. I find Prada Candy to be the most boring fragrance of fragrances. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Femme and Prada Candy are the two most boring fragrances in the fragrance market, in my opinion, across the board. I'm sure there's other ones that are boring, but those two are like boring friends. So they're the, these two boring girls and they both kind of talk like this and they go to parties and they're not bad looking and people will approach them, but then they find out very quickly that there's nothing to them and they just kind of walk away. And the most you're gonna get out of them is kind of like a soft wispy nothing. That to me is Prada candy. Now, some people love it. Like they go, ooh, that benzoin, it's so sexy. It's so comforting. It's so delicious. I I don't get that. What I get is just a sweet nothing, a sweet, boring nothing. So I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the whole entire candy line. Like sometimes like I'll smell one and go, oh, well, that's not too bad. But you know, when you're trying to force yourself to like something, that would be how I feel about Prada Candy, like the whole line. Prada Candy is the oldest sister in a whole family of boring people. So I'm not a fan. It looks and smells not too bad, but there's really nothing much going on upstairs or anywhere else. <laughs> so in number two spot is Floral Bomb by Victor and Rolf. Now this one was a bit of a shock to me because I know so many people really love that fragrance as well. For me, it's too floral. Um, it's got not quite enough, like it's, it's very sweet, but it's just so, so floral. So I feel like it's a big, huge floral bouquet. Um, I just can't get behind it. I know people love it. Apparently guys really love it, which makes sense. It's got patchouli in it. Actually there's tea. So the notes look really amazing, honestly, but just a huge amount of florals. I find it a little bit powdery, uh, decent longevity on it, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, at least for years and years and years, I just found it too, too floral. Um, I have Midnight Flower Bomb. I like that one okay. I find it a little sharp these days for some reason. Uh, but what I do really, really love is Flower Bomb Nectar. Like that one, I am so, so addicted to. Flower Bomb, I, I, I've I always left it. Like I didn't care once I smelt it the first time. To me, I wasn't into it. What about you? Is Flora Bomb one of your favorites? Leave it in the comments. In number one spot is Lady Million by Paco Rabanne. Now, I have never smelt this fragrance. And the reason why I've never smelt it is because I, 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 I hate that big, ugly, bulbous gold bottle. Like the bottle alone with the awkward sprayer. I, I don't even want to pick it up. I don't even want to try smell it because the, the container is so hideous. So I don't know what they were trying to do. Is it supposed to look like a gold block? Is it supposed to be like a gold diamond? Which doesn't make any sense to me at all. The whole thing is just weird. Not my vibe, but like, I think it's not a bad fragrance. Like you get kind of uh, varying reviews. If you've tried it, tell me what you think. Uh, honestly, Paco Rabanne, other than the Olympia line, I haven't been sold on their fragrances really at all, mainly because of the kitschy bottles. Uh, I think that they're, you know, mass appealing, but again, rather generic. I know the Fame one, lots of people have really liked that one. To me, it's just kind of a sweet, um, again, generic uh, you know, fragrance. It's got a little bit of mango in there. Uh, Lady Million, I have no idea because I've never smelt it because I just couldn't pull the trigger on it because I think the bottle so... It's just a monstrosity in my opinion. So that is number one. Out of this list, my bottom three. So if I were making this list in third spot would be uh, Gucci Bloom by Gucci uh, just because it's just too floral. Number two spot would be Canda, Candy by Prada because it's just so boring. It's so epically boring. Like it's it's like 
the most boring time ever. And then number, uh, number one spot would be Angel because I just find it so like literally gag worthy. I can't do that fragrance at all. What about you? What is your worst fragrances? Do you agree with chat GPT and the fragrances that they chose? Um, what they said in the end was, please note that these perfumes may have a wide range of opinions and might be loved by many people as well. So even they are diplomatic. The, re the reality is this fragrance is so subjective, but that's the list. I'm sticking to it. Tell me what your worst is or tell let me know if you agree with these. Do you agree with them or are there some of your favorites on this list? Weigh in in the comments. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week. We'll talk to you soon.